Welcome back. I'm Austin Westfall. We, of course, are continuing to cover uh, the, the disturbing uh, story out of uh, music mogul and hip-hop uh, legend Sean Diddy Combs. He was slapped today with six new sexual assault lawsuits. One man claiming he was 16 years old when Combs allegedly assaulted him at a party in 1998. The accusers are part of what their lawyers say is a group of more than 100 alleged victims. Combs was arrested last month in New York and has since pleaded not guilty to racketeering, conspiracy, and sex trafficking charges. Here to talk more about these developments is legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Nima Romani. Nima. Thanks for coming on. We knew more lawsuits were coming. Lawyer, uh, his lawyer said such. Uh, but now that there's one alleged minor uh, involved here, how does that change things? Austin, it changes the game completely. Now we have one minor who's gone on record and filed a civil lawsuit. Now, obviously, just a complaint. But if that minor or any of the minors make their way into the criminal case and there's a superseding indictment, it completely changes Diddy's strategy. This is why. Diddy's lawyers have come out in the public and they've said that the sexual activity, the freak offs happened, but they were consensual. There's nothing wrong if with weird activity between consenting adults, of course. If there's no force, fraud, or coercion, that makes it trafficking or payment, which makes it prostitution. However, minors cannot consent to sex, period. So if there are minors involved, then this case becomes much more like an R. Kelly or a Jeff Epstein type case where the defense has to disclaim any sexual activity whatsoever. So it's going to be interesting to see what do the feds do with this new evidence. And again, there's apparently, if you believe the plaintiff's lawyers, there's 25 minors who are willing to file civil lawsuits. So if they're willing to do the same, testify before the grand jury, testify at Diddy's criminal trial, do we see a superseding indictment alleging sex trafficking of minors? Because that changes the case completely. You know, how do these new accusations differ from the charges he faces when he goes to trial next year? Will prosecutors add more counts? Potentially, yes. So there's three types of people or types of victims or evidence that can come in at trial. The first is obviously if there is an allegation of sex trafficking of a specific victim, right? We know that, for instance, in the indictment, it's clear that Cassie Ventura is victim one. It's the parent from the allegation. So that's one type of person. But there are also RICO predicate acts that can come in. So we know we need under RICO, we need multiple racketeering crimes. It can be assault, kidnapping, bribery, and of course, rape or drug trafficking. So that type of evidence can come in. But we've also seen what we call prior bad acts. These are uh, victims and evidence that aren't charged, but they show a pattern or an MO. And we know with abusers, it doesn't matter whether it's Bill Cosby or Weinstein or anyone else, they tend to have the same pattern. And that's what we're seeing here. If you look at the allegations, Combs you know, would allegedly drug victims. He would use his security to threaten or even confine the victims. And then the sexual assaults would happen. And if victim after victim, Austin is telling the same story of physical and sexual violence, that's going to be very hard for the jurors to disbelieve. You know, the details in these suits, they're, they're graphic, Nima. Some of the alleged incidents happened in the 90s. Uh, could the statute of limitations be at play here? Do you, do you anticipate uh, that will be a part of the defense? It will, and it depends on the state, and it depends on the type of sexual assault. But one of the things that makes RICO so powerful is it really expands the conduct that can come in. There can be conduct that is outside a statute of limitations that can come into evidence. An example I like to give is the 2016 video of Combs beating Cassie Ventura here in Los Angeles, where I live. That's outside the statute of limitations. It can't be charged by the district attorney here. However, Crimes that are outside the statute can come into RICO as those predicate acts. So it really expands the number of people that can come in and the allegations and crimes that come in. As long as there's one RICO predicate act within five years, that's the statute of limitations, you can go back another 10 years and bring in other acts. And of course, that covers that 2016 incident. Dozens more lawsuits could be on the way. Uh, based on the sheer number alone, how could that sway a potential juror? Well, it can overwhelm someone like Holmes. Yeah. You know, obviously, sexual assault abuse happens behind closed doors. And sometimes you see, you know, juries, they can't 
necessarily believe the testimony of one victim when it's a he said, she said type situation. But just to bring up another case, I bring up Bill Cosby. The first time he was tried, there was one victim, one prior bad act witness, that jury hung. The prosecution came back with one victim, five prior bad acts witness, and the jury convicted. And obviously that conviction was overturned on uh, unrelated grounds. But it just shows that when you're talking about sexual assault, rape, the number of victims matters because it encourages others to come forward. And, you know, Combs can only say that this is a money grab and this is extortion or a shakedown that many times when we have individual after individual. Now we're talking about dozens that are telling the same story. It can be impossible for him to overcome. You know, he's been denied release from jail, Nima. His attorneys telling USA Today that the lawsuits are, quote, clear attempts to garner publicity, unquote. Where do Diddy and his attorneys turn next? Will he remain in jail until his trial next year? I believe so, Austin. So they've appealed to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the higher court. That's why the judge last week, the new judge, Subramanian, couldn't rule on the case. He doesn't have jurisdiction. But, you know, for the appellate court to release Combs, they really have to find that he's not a danger to the community. And we're talking about sex trafficking, drug trafficking. These are crimes that under federal law carry a presumption of detention. And of course, Combs' lawyers have put up a very creative $50 million bond, no internet access, no cell phone, round the clock, former law enforcement surveillance, even cameras in the courtroom. But I think judges will take pause and say, well, why would we treat Combs like differently than any other criminal defendant. Is there an exception here because he's rich and famous and has all this money he can put up? Anyone else would be detained, and that's why I expect him to continue to remain detained pending his trial date in May. What happens between now and May? What, what, what's going to be... Where does this story go between now and then? Are we going to be looking out for more charges? Something else? I think we are potentially looking at more charges, especially if there are minor victims. I think that's something that prosecutors have to consider. Now, the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York, they've historically, and especially this U.S. Attorney, Damien Williams, has taken a very surgical approach. Doesn't want to throw the kitchen sink in, charge a lot of people, lots of victims. He wants to focus on what he can readily prove. That's why you don't see all these other allegations involving, you know, the murder of Tupac and the shootings and those types of things. We've seen it with Eric Adams, for instance. Just one defendant, not everyone else that's involved in that bribery scheme being charged. But I do think if there's minors, the U.S. Attorney's Office has to consider adding them for the reasons that we discussed. And the question is, how does Combs defend this case? I think he's going to have to base it entirely on cross-examination. That's why when they went before the new judge last week, they said their defense is only going to take about a week because I think the majority of their defense is going to be going after these victims, saying they're liars, saying they did all this to get money and this is a shakedown. Just I don't know how effective that's going to be in a case like this. You already referred to the appeal process, but what do you think is in store appeal-wise in the, in the coming months? Well, we know that Combs has essentially unlimited money. I mean, he is, was worth a billion dollars, maybe worth half that. I'm sure his finances have taken a significant hit, but he's going to litigate this at every possible step. We saw it was just the bail issue. There was a magistrate judge, bail was denied. They went to the district judge, bail was denied, the higher judge. Then they went to a higher court, the Court of Appeals. Obviously, they can petition to the Supreme Court. Unlikely the Supreme Court would get involved in something like this, but I fully expect him to litigate this at every step of the way because sometimes the best defense is a good offense, and that's what I think the defense lawyers are going to do here. They're going to go on the offense, go after the prosecution. They're already alleging that they're not producing all the electronic evidence and discovery and certainly go after the alleged victims in this case. Thanks, Nima. Have a good night. Thanks, Austin. Talk to you soon.